Yo, why you take a picture of me, fat fuck? Because so I wanted to showcase. I wanted to showcase Brandon. You know, you know, I can sue you for that, right? Yeah, and then I will rock your shit. <laughs> What is up, guys? Welcome to episode eight of the Culture Sack Podcast. I'm one of four hosts, Jeremy, and we got the three other goats of this podcast: Eric, Marco, Brandon. How are you guys today? How's everybody doing on this Friday? Oh my god, we we're all great, right? What a day! What a week, right? What a day! What an incredible day today! It's been it's been a little bit rougher for some of us um but we're we just got to make it through every day and that's just how we do we persevere baby that's all we do of course exactly nothing the gym can't solve God, exactly and we're gonna go after this fucking podcast i'm gonna i love it guys so first order of business that we i wanted to speak to you guys about is the wolverine suit reveal um, there's been a lot of uh, Deadpool 3 news this week, guys. Um, mm -hmm. Especially today, that the big announcement that Deadpool 3 production is also stopped as well. So we're also going to talk a little bit about that. But I just want to ask you guys, uh, what do you guys think about the suit, first of all? We're finally getting the yellow and, is it yellow and blue suit. So very nostalgic. Yeah. Eric Eric looks the most excited out of everybody. How do you, Eric, what do you think about it? Nah, I want to hear what the boys got to say first. I've been excited to hear them. I haven't been. I I haven't Marco, let me let me ask Marco the question because Marco wearing that yellow, bro. Marco, I, what you what's up? He should have he should have gone in the Halloween spandex suit. I think that would have been a better choice. No, just have like him. the ones that are skin tight, bro. Dumb skin. Nah, tight. the one the ones with the with the with the padding. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but for real, I like the suit. Um, one thing I don't like is like the too many lines. That's one thing I've noticed a lot of suits, especially MCU suits, have been having is a lot of lines. One th one of the biggest offenses is the Spider-Man one, the, like the um, the Iron Man one. I'm I'm talking about the one in Homecoming when Tony gave him the suit and he was wearing that for the beginning of the movie, like with the line with with the black lines. For oh. for some reason, Marvel likes to do that, um, and that's my only complaint with it. Overall, I mean, it looks pretty good and I'm actually happy that Hugh Jackman gets to wear this suit um, especially for me considering like to me his 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 swan song and his final goodbye will always be Logan so to see him come back and to see him just do this you know I, and it's unfortunate that it's not really um, they stopped filming for obvious reasons for what's going on but um, to see him come back and to see him in the classic suit, I think is. It's, I'm I'm happy as a as a fan, especially of the cartoons and everything. This is something uh, that we talked about sort of in the last episode, uh, but obviously we didn't really know if he was gonna like. I I heard there were rumors, but it wasn't official until um, earlier this week. Brandon, how about you? I like the suit a lot. I love it actually. It looks hard. Like it's, hard. it's just like how Eric said last week. Yellows are kind of hard color to pull off. The one thing I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure, if, you know, I don't know if you remember that meme of the uh, of the Wolverine holding like something like this. The picture of G. Uh, G. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah. I hope they do that. So, like a little like reference to that meme, kind of like how like the Spider Man did the whole memes with like the pointing thing and you know like things like that. I hope they like do that little thing. That'll be like a fun little Easter egg. But Overall, the suit I think looks great. Uh, Hugh Jackman's always, you know, been fantastic as Wolverine. Uh, so I'm glad to see him back, and especially in the uh, iconic suit. What nah, I gotta. I want to hear. I want to hear what Jeremy has to say because uh, Jeremy's the one that hit us. He started off with the hot streak, so let's make sure he keeps the hot. I touch. mean, I'm gonna agree let's with go. you guys. I love the suit. I think it's uh, it's a big W for all the fans that we they've been waiting for this suit forever. Even though they teased it way back, like in one of the X Men movies, I can't remember which one it was. It, it was, was uh, a conversation. One. It was a it was conversation. The end yeah, it was like yeah, I was like one of the egg credits, right? Yeah. Well, um, it was a, it was a, yeah. We didn't get to see. We didn't get to see them. I don't know if we saw the mask. Did they, did they show pictures in the mask no. or anything? That's that's gonna be the like a they big didn't. question. I no, think the mask. Didn't. To me, the mask is what makes that suit. 
you I'm, know, I'm to, a, yeah, you, that's what like, I'm looking for. You guys, you guys want to, you guys know what I'm trying to say? Like, I, I think if they are able to pull off the mask, I think this is gonna be like the best. Well, one of the best. The only suit. suit. Well, it's one of the only suits that we've won, like. There's been a. It'll be the. It'll be like any, the like best. Barely. The best Wolverine. I'm, ta- I'm talking about like in the movie in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But like, because we always have like the regular like. Hugh Jackman in the tank top or just Hugh Jackman like shirtless the tank or top that. Goes hard, like, though. The tank top does go hard. It's a very like Logan, very rough, rough like like rigid ass fucking like look to it and I love it, you know, because that's that's Wolverine's whole character, that he's like this like rough, like badass Canadian guy. That's like just been through so much shit. So I'm glad to see this happening. Um if you guys had to pick, though, would you guys would have preferred seeing the brown or the the yellow and blue? The yellow and blue. Yellow and blue, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I would prefer yellow and blue, but I think the brown and black look, probably looks a little bit cleaner on, on live action. Jackman? Yeah, that's what I think, too. Because I have an action figure. It's somewhere, like, in my, like, like, a little drawer that I have. It's from, like, 2003. It's an old Wolverine figure. The claws, you know, I, I declawed this motherfucker, but um, you knew yeah, him. I, I, <laughs> you knew it's like him. a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cat. No, yeah, but um, I mean, the figure is super old, and I was like a kid, so like I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I didn't see any value in that as a kid, you know. So now I wish I would have kept it like in pristine condition because that would have been so cool. I like the, I like the, like how Eric said, the brown and yellow. Would have gone crazy. I think like it fits his like character because of like the whole, um, you know, like you know when he was wearing that that brown leather jacket, yeah, in one of the old, yeah, it will kind of be like a similar vibe to that. It was like a good look, regardless. But I, I I think that um I think that this Wolverine is gonna be the same one from um, this could be a hot thing. It could be the same one from that same Professor X. Mm. Of madness. I don't think I don't think the, the like I don't think Professor X the one we saw in the Doctor Strange movie I don't think that was actually you know the um the Professor X we saw in the Fox movies I don't I think the same is going to apply for this Wolverine I think obviously Hugh Jackman like plays him but like it's going to be a different well, version like a that's what I'm saying it's a theory I'm not no yeah no that's actually a good theory I have a different theory my theory is that the Professor X that we got was the Professor X from the animated show, because oh. the mu- the oh. theme song played when uh when Professor X appeared on the screen. That's true. So, so I wonder. Um, I have a couple of questions. I mean, my first question is: Is he gonna have a mask on? Are they gonna give him a mask? Because, it, like I said, if we talk about, it's funny because last podcast we talked about it. Uh, I said that it was gonna be probably months or. A while until we get a, a leak of or a reveal of Wolverine suit, and we yeah, got and it. Then literally that same week it <laughs> popped up. Yeah, I mean I love the suit. I agree with Marco. Sometimes when they do the extra details on the suits, they try to overcomplicate it to make it look realistic, mm-hmm. and instead, it just looks like a big bunch of nothing. Tacky. Yeah. Like, yeah. All tactical. we want is like simplicity it, as well. It looks tactical. Yeah. It looks military. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. Um, like I said. I feel like sometimes the simplicity makes it look better. The way Jeremy was saying as well, the simplicity on these suits make the suits pop more, and then it really complements the per- the actor's body type, depending on who they're playing. Yeah. Um, I'm really worried because I wish there is a mask, because like I said, um, for me, Wolverine has one of the most iconic suits of all time, up there mm-hmm. with Batman and Spider-Man. The details on their suits just fit so well. And Superman, um, you forgot. The details on their suits fit so well, but um, but uh, I think for me the other thing too is uh, what like you guys said, what interpretation are we gonna get of 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 Wolverine? Are we gonna get a Wolverine from the same timeline as X Men and Logan? Probably, maybe not, because I feel like if you bring him back, then it's a disservice to Logan, right? right. And the way that movie ended, right? So maybe this is the X Men X Men animated series because. Remember, an animated series, he's a little bit... He's a, he's not the youngest guy either in that show. So, you know, it's Hollywood. 
there's 38 year olds playing 19 year olds so it's possible to make Hugh Jackman play a middle aged 33 34 year old Wolverine yeah you know that motherfucker's like 50 like 50 something yeah he's about to be touching 50 for his age though yeah, that's yeah, bro. What, that's that. That's that TRT special bubble. Yeah, they're giving him uh, the Joe Rogan combo. Right. But um, he, he actually the you know those genes that they gave him, they're doing good on him. You know. Yeah, and then and then on top of that, uh, the photos in this the mind. photos that we got look pretty interesting because people got a little bit distracted with uh, the super view, but um, we also got some photos of him fighting Deadpool. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work. Maybe Deadpool tries to recruit her or try him in typical Deadpool fashion. And um, Wolverine gives him the big F off in his typical way. But uh, do you guys think that this is going to have a mask after seeing the, the photos and seeing... I think that... they're going to have a mask for sure. Uh, do you I'm think it's going to sure, be CGI? Bro. Nah, I think, I think it's we're going to see like... it. I was going to say that. If they, if, it, if they do CGI, it's over. I don't, I don't want that. Maybe that's yeah, why he's not walking around with a mask because we've seen that before. We've seen that before. I'm, I'm not. I, nah, I, but I think kind of, I think Ryan fine. Reynolds like learns from his mistake with the, uh, you Green know. Lantern? Yeah. So I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that traumatized Ryan Reynolds so much that he like wants like an actual suit. I don't think he's gonna let that happen. Um, you know what I was what I was gonna mention which Wolverine I think it is. I, it might just be like just me, you know, just like overthinking this, but. I remember when Deadpool went back in time and killed himself like that awful abomination that they gave Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. That, you know how he kind of like looked him like, oh, hey, Logan. And he kind of like was like. That's a good theory, actually. I think it might be that yeah. one. And he's going to be like, aren't you the guy that killed that one? Like, he's probably going to like say something like, stu- like, you know, like funny. But I mean, if that was if, if that's what I'm thinking, that's that's who I'm thinking as the uh, for Wolverine. That'd be dope. But what about? But then you know, he's technically he'd be wearing the tank tops and then the ex the the spy kid suits all that time. So what ends up happening to him out of nowhere just deciding to wear like the they blue? Probably, and, probably gave him like a like a cool ass suit. One thing that I saw people wanted was the short sleeves. The short sleeve suit because he had long sleeves, like fully mm-hmm. covered his arm. Short sleeve would have been cool, but I also thought like, for the I, short sleeve. I thought I think it would have looked a little weird at live action. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would just look like, like it a looked like, like a regular t shirt. It'd be yeah. It looked like he was walking dishes. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, I've heard some people but, say they want the short sleeves because of his arms because he trains his arms. No, but that's for sure. Thing. I mean, I I as the more photos I see. That was a good one, Marco. By the way, that'd be dope. And the thing is, Hugh Jackman has the best biceps too. No, he has really good biceps, yeah. But uh, sorry, Marco, you kidded that out. I didn't mean to say that. But um, no, you're good, you're good. But but, but yeah, good. I mean, I mean, the other thing too is uh, the more photos I see come out. I don't know about you guys. I'm starting to get more excited for this film. I know last week I'm like so-so about it, but I'm starting to get excited just because um, Wolverine is one of my favorite Marvel characters. And on top of that, um, you know how Marvel is. Whenever they give their their heroes solo movies they kind of come in trilogies we mm-hmm. see we saw it with iron man we've seen it with captain america all that so kind of like for me what i was thinking to myself was if this is deadpool 3 and this is like the 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 gif you know the final the final movie for deadpool how do they incorporate him into the to the mcu into like what disney's trying to do so maybe the ending to this movie has bigger ramifications, repercussions than we realize. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. You're right. So and maybe they say it's this final one. No, but I was thinking about like how Marvel does their like movies and stuff, and that if you copy that formula, this would yeah. be his last one. But Ryan Reynolds, I mean, let's think about it. Let's be honest, boys. If you put Ryan Reynolds in the MCU, if we're going just by status and fame and whatnot, he's the biggest actor in the mm-hmm. MCU. I feel like he'd be a perfect fit. You know, you could still make it work, but I would love to see him. I would love to see him in the MCU, and I feel like maybe this movie is going to be more important than we realize. Hopefully. Because, you know, MCU definitely needs that shit. They literally only had, like, was it one good movie this entire year? Probably two if you include Guardians and uh, what's the other yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, my bad. No, yeah, Guardians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought of. Nah, Guardians. Man, pretty fire. Wait, what's the other? Who? Marvel or Disney? 
Yo, Jeremy, you've watched, you've watched, you've watched longer porn scenes than you've watched Ant Man. You fell asleep in the first five minutes, son. <laughs> Yo, cut that. <laughs> I was just trying to make somebody laugh, bro. Just, just yeah. censor Eric saying that. <laughs> All right. Um, no. um. So what's the? Naya, Jeremy. Uh, you were very excited for uh, you know, for your nap while watching Ant Man. What's the next uh, topic? I don't know what happened, bro. I, don't know. I do know what happened. You didn't like what you thought the movie was boring. No, what but happened? yeah. To stay on to the course of things, um, we're all so everybody agrees that this movie suit looks badass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think this so, is great. So, uh, on to the next topic, which is kind of in the same world of of Disney in a weird way. Um, Kathleen Kennedy, the person that's overseen Lucas Films, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones. Uh, there's a there's a rumor. Just to clarify, it is a rumor. Uh, some some pretty notable people in the world of Star Wars uh, reported it, including Star Wars Theory. Right. That uh, Kathleen Kennedy is going to be, I'll happily say, fired. Let's go! I'm sick of her ass. I'm sick of that shit. No. Let me deal with her shit this season. Oh, yeah! The boot. Fired. What's the shape of Italy? What's the shape of Italy, boys? A boot. Boo. Yes, sir. Uh, up. So she might be getting fired. And, um... I think for me, there's no one more deservable of that outcome than her. Yeah, she ruined uh, a lot of uh, things. She has killed two IP, very iconic IPs, if you have and, to say. And the fact that yeah, and the fact that she's lasted this long is such a surprise. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember in time, but when the first Star Wars came out in 2016, it was like the most talked about thing. Like, there was theories going around the internet. Twitter was buzzing. J.J. Abrams was, like, literally a celebrity darling at that point. Mm -hmm. um, there were, Every time you would get set photos, people were talking about it, coming up with theories. They were on Variety. They did a bunch of cover magazines. It was, it was a crazy time period, and they had all that momentum to have it just be dissipated within the f after that second movie that second movie was the worst thing i've ever watched and, I, and i've seen howard the duck bro like i think nothing... that movie was better than howard the yeah. Duck. Sure. yeah yeah I, bro i thought i think howard the duck was better than, than like you know that whole star yeah, wars right, really. so literally Dude, that howard shit the duck was like the lord of the rings nah that shit. but yeah boys i mean i know all of us have different relationships with star wars uh Camo has some uh, has a good amount of familiarity with Star Wars. Marcos, Marcos has an affinity for Star Wars. Oh, yeah, um, buddy, Anakin Skywalker is the goat. Yeah, Jeremy, I know you have some sort of idea and knowledge of Star I, Wars. I mean, I watched the movies in high school, but yeah, I'm Jeremy saw the, the new trilogy. Wars, but like, right. no, I haven't I actually. Haven't I've seen the old movies? Yeah, he yeah, saw the good movies. <laughs> those those <laughs> were the good movies, bro. <laughs> Thank so God. Which is funny because when the first, when the the prequels came out, people shitted on them. And yeah, now, I now as time goes by, people would love them. Which is hilarious because I always loved the prequels. The prequels I are always, hard, bro. Uh, the we prequels so, are the best ones. Yeah. Bro, we got so much content out of just the prequels alone. We got like that, that whole PS, yeah, that, that one, bro. The Clone Wars. We got the, the, the cartoon one from Cartoon Network. All the yeah, movies that we had. Imagine we had a. Uh, where, where, where's nope. your Darth Maul at? Oh, okay. Oh shit! It's in the trunk. I'm trying to figure out what she's done, or what she's produced that has stayed long term good. E.T. No, no, I'm talking about Star it's Wars. The Star Wars. The, the, the specifically mm. the Star Wars thing. Um. I know what. Because the prequel. Oh, because uh, this cause, fucking franchise. Because the sequel trilogy, Force Awakens, was fine. Force Awakens was a cookie cutter of the first one. Of the right. first ever. Right, but like I, I prefer cookie cutter than what we got afterwards. Um, but Ooh, yeah, but like, it, but it just adds to my point. After that, we really didn't get anything. Um, God, what was the one that we saw, which was a spinoff with Darth Vader? Rogue, Rogue. One, yeah, yeah, that Rogue one. one. One, okay, that was a good one. That was um, a really good one. I'll be honest. I, I remember I watched it. I think I know. I, then, I, I, I think I paid for your ticket. I paid for you and Tato, and you guys. Fell asleep throughout the movie. We fell asleep until we fell asleep. We fell asleep until we fell asleep until the final like 
scene of the movie which we woke up to and we're like, yo, this movie's fire. And then we realize, oh, it's over. <laughs> yeah, and Darth Vader hit that boss level type of difficulty. Um, but yeah, and then oh, and what happened after that? And then Solo bombed. And then... Solo was atrocious. They should have never made that movie. And wasn't, she like, wasn't she like produced Mandalorian? Rise of Skywalker. I think... Well, uh, that trash? I mean, she, she, well, okay. She's... Well, she signed off on it. Remember, she's still like the head boss, so she signed off on it. But whoever produced it, I think, was um, John, John, John Favreau. Favreau. Yeah. And, um, and the guy who produced... I forgot his name, but the guy who produced the animated shows. Um, Dave Filoni. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so she did some good things, but at the end of the day, like everything that she's done, doesn't really last very long. And she's she's, 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 she's so been excited at producers. To she's done it. nothing. She's, she's done producer. nothing. She's done but, nothing. Oh, but but I think if if she if she's gonna get replaced, anybody's better than her. Anybody. anybody. Are you down? She, are you down for Dave Filoni to replace her? Sense, sense yeah, or, yeah, but I mean, or maybe Dave John Favreau. Like how? Nah, I would say John Favreau, just because I don't know how well he could do outside of the Mandalorian. I mean, Dave Filoni right now, he's if nobody knows, but if you guys don't know, just to clarify, Dave Filoni was the guy that was in charge of Star Wars Rebels, right? Which was a, a great, great run of uh, for Star Wars. Um, when things were bleak, that was their their light throughout all this time and um he's pretty, he's gonna be a part of ahsoka which yep. is gonna be a big deal um ahsoka i think is gonna be the best live action we're gonna get the mandalorian season three was extremely disappointing if you compare it to what we got season one and season two um Worse. yeah i feel yeah, like fucking, she, fucking got, lizzo in there yeah i mean they've they fumbled bob they fumbled boba fett i mean boba fett sorry i was i was reading bobble Right now, I don't know why. Um, they fumbled Boba Fett. On top yeah, of that, goat. on top of that, nobody asked for a Han Solo movie. Nobody asked for that. Bro, not, not even Harrison Ford likes Han Solo. That's what I'm saying. They could have just. The thing is, Harrison Ford hates Star Wars fans. But um, for me, what was frustrating was we didn't ask for that. And then on top of that, she just. You see the things that she signs off on, and you're just thinking to yourself. If Why? you know anything, if if yeah, if you know anything about Star Wars, this is what you sign off on. The fact that you got three different directors, it was about to be three, until JJ was JJ Abrams came back for um for uh nine. You're gonna have three different directors for a Star Wars trilogy. Make that make sense. It was JJ Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and. Let me tell you right now, Ryan Johnson, I don't know how he was able to fix his career because after that shit show, yo, I left that movie theater ready to fucking shit on an ant pile. I was ready to, just, to ruin somebody's life, bro. I think the problem wasn't that there were three directors. I think more so the problem was that they, they chose three directors that won't communicate with each other and were trying to tell their own thing. That's exactly. why The Last Jedi yeah. didn't work. Because The Last, Jedi, the last, the last Jedi was basically like it wasn't consistent what was going on with the first movie. One hundred percent. And my only the only thing I can say about Rise of Skywalker, Ben Solo, aka Kylo Ren, was the most badass thing about that whole Yeah, they fucked it up. That whole trilogy. And, and then he got it up. He got killed off, bro. He got killed off. And then you have Dolphin sign fucking Ray out here. Oh, Ray Skywalker. Yo, that's mad disrespectful, bro. Your oh, grandpa they had him. Yo, your grandpa fucked up a whole family tree, bro. And you're taking that family tree's last name. That uh, shit was. How did they kill him, Eric? That, oh, was, that was a shit show. That was a literal shit show. I don't, I don't, I don't ever, ever want to see her touch Star Wars. That woman needs to retire. She's seven years old. With her decisions she's made, she belongs in a retirement home. And I will make sure to give her the last cup of fucking pudding because that shit will be lukewarm because that's what she deserves. It's just, I mean, even now it's a problem because. I think you had Taika Waititi. He was gonna direct a Star Wars movie, and we don't know what that. Oh, don't even go. get me. Taika, the, Taika guy, that, the yeah. guy, the guy, the guy, the guy that asked that any Portman if she wanted to be in a Star Wars movie, bro. I go. I don't know, bro. That man. The I moment go. I would have heard that shit, I would have canceled him. I would have called his agent, fired him on the spot. And on top of that, I'm gonna be so real with you. 
They brought her in because she knows Steven Spielberg. She's worked with him on E.T. She's worked with him on Jurassic Park, all these movies. But those still weren't her movies, bro. Also, um, also Kevin Feige was supposed to make a, uh, a Star Wars movie, and we don't know where that's going to go. So that's... I don't even... Yo, and with how Kevin Feige's been lately, bro, that man's been sipping too much Kool-Aid and gin and juice, bro. That man um... has been all over the place. But uh, my last words, because I know I've been talking too much. I, I'm just very passionate about this. All I'm going to say is this woman got so much credit for Jurassic Park when that's based off of a fucking book. It's based off of a book. And we're out here touching, like, we're out here acting like she turned dinosaur shit into gold. Oh, God. And she made, first of all... Oh, God, bro. First yeah, of all... No, no, I'm Yo, tag me in on this. Tag me on this. Tag me in on this. I'm done, bro. All right, like, for me, so she's writing off of Steven Spielberg's success. She's been writing this shit off since the '80s, bro. This fucking lady has done so much shit. She's a, she is a cinematic terrorist. That's a crazy. Not gonna lie, I I wow. didn't even say that. Wow, a I cinematic terrorist. Oh, yeah. I send her, send her out to the retirement home. She needs to now, fucking leave. Yeah, bro, because the decisions she makes are so out of touch. I trust Jeremy with all those franchises more than her. I think I could do a better job than her. I think I could make a, a crazy storyline. I'd rather get the directors that that film that um, you know you know those slideshow as uh animes that was on Netflix, Ragnarok. Oh fuck! I'd rather get those Google cro- uh slide slideshow as thing for a director than that. I'd rather have the people that make the Leprechaun movies to do that shit. <laughs> the PowerPoint presentation, bro. bro. The Leprechaun movies, you're funny, bro. I'd rather have whoever made that movie, bro. I don't even know. Bro, I'd rather I'd rather have the person that makes Sharknado make this shit, bro. <laughs> Bruh. Remember when they went to space, bro? All I look, boys. Uh, the Sharknado. I, yeah, the I person who said, in space. I'd rather get the person. <laughs> I'd rather get the person who made Jason go to Manhattan to make them. Are you about? <laughs> I rather made. I rather get the person that made. Uh, I rather get the person who tries to creepy pasta instead, bro. Hey, bro. He makes. He made his films. <laughs> it's better than anything Kathleen Kennedy could ever do. On God. Better. Um, nah, but yeah, she what just got her, he was just expected to be so great. Yeah, but whenever you see her like, name, bro, he took a fat shit on it, like a fat elephant. He took a shit. I the think, of the I think like they gotta the start stag- expanding Star Wars a lot more. I think what they're doing in the video game side is brilliant, um, especially with yeah. Jedi Fallen Order. Like, we're getting a new character we've never seen before, and it. I think they gotta continue that to the movies. Um. After I, I gotta stop seeing, I want to stop seeing like the Skywalkers because I think their story's done, and if they keep doing more, they're just gonna ruin their legacy as we've already seen. Um, bro, they they could have like corrected it when they got like the whole thing, but bro, even you know what it is that even Mark Hamill shits on like <laughs> these new movies. Right, he I, hates them, bro. I, I just, just think I, I, I just think they gotta expand it because it it you have an IP that you can do unlimited things with. There's a, mid, a limited storylines. Is entire galaxies and universes. Here, Go ahead. Here, here's the thing though. George Lucas, when he was in charge of his baby, the Skywalker story spanned all the way to the great 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 nephews, nieces, grandsons, all that. Right, yeah, and yeah, it, was good, it was good. It was good story though, but at the same time, they also branched out. We got a little bit about, you know, the Knights of the Old Republic. We got a lot of stuff like that. We don't even have updates on a couple things. We don't have an update on Knights of the Old Republic remaster. We don't like Marco said in one of his videos. We don't have updates on. Um, they said that they were gonna do like a, uh, uh, Republic Old Republic type of yeah, thing, yeah, and they, they did a remake, and then it just it's in development. They the one that's for the PSP? No, it's, no, it's no. for the PS5. It's going to make yeah, it for the PS5. And, and on top of that, the thing is, they're good at things that don't really matter. Okay, fine. The game is considered canon. That's great. But let's be honest. Star yeah, everybody's Wars... Everybody's playing games. And it's a cinema prop. It's a cinematic prop. It's a, it's a movie property. It's what it's yeah. famous for. When you think movies, Star Wars is one of the first things when you think of when it comes to movies. And mm-hmm. she... She destroyed it. She destroyed it, and I have no problem saying that. I have, I have no problem saying that at all. Exactly. Um, I mean, look. Uh, in one of the scenes, Luke Skywalker throws his lightsaber in the ocean, or on the ground. Does it fucking Ray get it back somehow? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. The next epi- the next episode that came out, uh, episode nine, 
they talk about how a, a lightsaber should never be treated as trash or something like that. That was just a lack of creative direction. And like, how do you not know that? Even Mark Hamill said it. He said, I hated filming that scene. He didn't say, I hated filming that scene, but he said, a lightsaber is as important to a Jedi as anything else. You're not going to treat your a piece of yourself like trash, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But whatever, I got that all off my chest. Uh, Jeremy, you told us that you think she shot on the property. Uh, Marco, you said that uh, we haven't really gotten much stuff. That was good. I, I do well, think I, she needs to go, though. I called her a cinematic terrorist. And you Brandon called said. her, yeah. Brandon, you called her a terrorist. A cinematic, a cinematic terrorist. Cinematic terrorist. Let's clarify that. Uh, um, I think I think we all gave our opinions on that. I think uh, Eric is yeah, yeah. definitely passionate about that. Um, as far as the next the next topic goes, um, there's in terms of passionate people, th- this is gonna strike a lot of people. Um, now, in the past couple episodes, we did talk about the writer's strike, um, and there's obviously updates on that. But there's a new development in the world of um, Hollywood, Hollywood. That is, yeah, in the world of Hollywood that has been servicing. Well, first of all, let's talk about the writer's strike real quick. Um, the studios have apparently said that, um, according to like an insider, um, a person who works in these studios, um, and it's been confirmed everywhere, uh, apparently the studios are planning to kind of carry out and drag this strike along with the writers until October, because that is when they predict that a lot of the writers will no longer have money and will eventually be um, broke. broke and out of homes and out of um, all their savings in order t- for them to um, to have no any continue. type of to, to have any type of uh, of of leeway in the deal because I guess they want this deal to be signed in their favor. Wow! First of all, let's start with that before we go into the actors. Any any opinions on that? Yes. Did you see what Ron Perlman, what Ron Perlman said on on his own TikTok account? Uh, no. I th- he said it today. He said it. It was very recent. Yeah. News. He said it so, today. He said, as you guys know, Ron Perlman was in Sons of Anarchy. He said the most right. Ron, Ron Perlman, Hellboy, Sons of Anarchy thing he could say. He goes, you're out here talking about that. Do you expect things to get done when people are going to be out of homes? in October because they can't afford to pay and take care of their families when you're here making $27 million. You know what he said? He goes, you know, people know that you have a house. People know that people know where you live and you don't know what could happen to your house. You don't know if someone wants to do something to your house. You don't know if you could lose anything in your house. And he goes, so get shit right. This man, this man pretty much threatened Hollywood and the that's, big that's the slave coming out, bro. Well, that's he big. specifically <laughs> threatened, or he specifically was talking about Bob. Uh, I'm sorry, Bob, Bob Iger, Iger, who is the head another, of Disney right now. Another moron, another moron, someone that does nothing, sits on his hands, and le- he sits on his hands, farts on his hands, and then he sniffs his hands. The guy, <laughs> the guy's pride, man. But, um, but yeah, boys, I just want to know, um. I honestly feel like this is going to get way worse before it gets better anytime soon. Uh, this is the most upset, angry, frustrated, and tired I think we've seen actors and writers in a long time. And you're getting two people that are working in unison together to make a giant, giant wave to make sure that things change for them. They're really, this is important to a lot of people when you see that in the way people are talking so passionately and so diligently so uh jeremy i know this was something you were taught you you talked about in the group chat marco i know this is something we talked about in our group meeting uh camo i know you've been doing some research on it so i want to i want to know boys what are your initial thoughts this is going to ruin hollywood um yeah this is going to ruin a lot worse than covid did because at least when covid you had already a lot of movies in the pipeline. This has been going on since quarter one of 2023. May, yeah, um, since May quarter, second. Quarter two, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you have a lot of studios with movies that are already scheduled to release next year, but then you have a lot of movies right now that are in production. This is going to affect DC. This is going to affect Marvel. This is going to affect all. This is going to affect everything. Univer- this is going to affect Universal. This is going to affect everything. You're going to see. Because the thing is, is that with the writer's strike, writers are not allowed to go to work. It's against the law. Um, they can't even do rewrites. So 
that's part of the reason why Deadpool 3 is um, shut down as of right now. They can't even do rewrites. You can't even do uh, improvisation because that's part of the that's part of the dialogue. So you can't there's even do that. Um, there's not going to be even. There's not going to even be full press tours either after Barbie and Open Oppenheimer. Yeah, you can forget about talk shows or any of that because that all requires writing week to week basis. Um, yep. So that's going to be a problem. Um, the fact that studios decided. Another thing I've been hearing is that. Sorry for cutting you off. Netflix, but. yeah. In fact, I think I think Netflix is is uh, is one of the main contributors of this because they they don't want to be paying residuals. Which oh, what is know what, If you guys what know what that is, um, yeah. basically yeah, basically is when actors get paid or, or, or writers get paid um, every time. Right. So every time you watch a show on Netflix or on Hulu or whatever, that that viewership that that money that goes from that viewership counts to the writers who watch it. Um, Whether it's five dollars, twenty dollars, exactly. They get that and yeah. the thing is, is that Netflix doesn't want to be paying that. Um, part of the reason for that is because they're still billions of dollars in debt. Um, so they're one of the main contributors to this, as well as Disney, as well as WB. And <laughs> what's funny is that people are getting up to Bob Iger, but a lot of people are also uh, angry at uh, at David well. Zaff, yes, uh, who is the head of of WB Discovery and you His know is even crazier from yeah. what I've heard fire that man which is crazy considering that their business their overall company isn't is doing a lot worse than Disney um they've they have not been doing unfortunately they have not been doing well this year um so for them to kind of be demanding this is kind of crazy also I've been hearing people online saying that why would they why would they let this rumor go out why would they let this happen and apparently some people are saying that this could be kind of a, uh, a scare tactic it could also imply that the studios are, are I guess their backs are, are against the wall so it could be that the writers are um, having some I guess leverage but at the same time you know I don't think uh, the writers would want to uh, take that risk because they again right. they can lose their homes and everything this is something that I, this is cruel actually so this is this is kind of insane it is. it's what Ron Perlman said you have these people making 27 million dollars a year doing nothing in a position of power, which is ridiculous, you know. I mean, they make these so that's what all these decisions. companies do, man. Yeah, bro. Or people that are not even people that are not in touch with the world of pop culture, with the way the industry moves. They, you know what? They may know some industry stuff, industry moves, and how the industry works, but they still they're not in touch with pop culture and our generation and the generation before us and the generation after us. When you see that in some of the decisions they make, Baba Iger and all these people in charge. They're not at a point where you could say, wow, here's my portfolio. Look at everything I've done. And you could say, man, this guy's worth $27 million a year. These are positions where people that are working at Fortune 500 companies are still making a quarter of that. So why are not we even. giving, why, yeah, why are we giving these people so much money? And then they're the ones talking about, oh, we, nah, we got to start paying writers less. We got to start paying these actors less. It's yeah, ridiculous. Bro. They're not doing That's, anything. Yo. Kathleen Kennedy, Bob Iger, and the other guy. What's his name? Dave. How do you pronounce his name? David Zaslav. That motherfucker. Yo, <laughs> man, these people <laughs> to the fucking retirement <laughs> home. <laughs> Take them. Send them to the. Send them. Send them to where they belong. And out of all three, I think uh, Dave makes the most out of all of them. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. They're the company like... that's going the brokest. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the scariest part in all of this too is the fact that there was also a report saying that um, uh, that now they're trying to use um, AI when it comes to background actors. So now they could use your likeness and image for any type of movie, any type of TV show, and you get paid one check. I'm I'm, I'm telling y'all, get ready for movies to be shit. No, and it's not gonna work. The fact that these studios and these directors and all that are trying to use AI as a weapon or as is ridiculous it's it, as a negotiating tactic or a scare yeah. tactic is a is a joke because i rather feel i feel like and i know i'm going to come off as as maybe ignorant when i say this because we don't really know the scope on how hollywood work but i've seen people like john krasinski from the office i've seen even people like uh, i know nobody feels too fond of him i see people like will smith who are strictly actors become solid directors. The the importance of a writer and an actor weighs far more onto the industry than that of a of a director. Right. There's very few that truly matter. The Spielbergs, 
the the Nolans, the Bro the Brookheimers, those are the ones that matter. And we're giving too many, way too much power. So these people like Kathleen Kennedy, Bob Iger, <laughs> fucking <laughs> and fucking David, whatever the fuck his name is, David Fuckface. David Fuck David Fuckface. All right. <laughs> That's what Hollywood's gonna do, though, guys. You guys have to realize that they're gonna do anything to save a penny on the dollar. Hollywood, like, they're just assholes, and like, they'll do whatever they want to save pennies on the dollar, and they want to like, it, it, they want to drag it to the point where they want to have, like, writers, that, like, on the street. They want to have people lose their homes, like, they want to have people not being able to eat or like, take care of their kids. Like, it's just crazy, bro. And, and those are the people that that put in the most hours and the most work into into a script. Or when it comes to when it comes to acting, like it's just it's not fair, and that's pretty much the gist of what I'm trying to say. Like it's just not fair, and I don't really know when this is gonna be over. Like supposedly they have like a hearing, not a hearing, but like they have like a like a meeting on Sunday or so, something on the 16th, something that involves with all this stuff, probably something with the deal. But for for but for now, like we're just gonna have to wait and see. Good question for the three of y'all. What were some shows that you enjoyed that came out this year in 2023? Last of Us. Was, uh, Last of Us? Yeah. Awesome. What about you? Ander? Okay, that's a good one. I fucked with Wednesday, bro. Wednesday was cool. Wednesday uh, was even fire. Just as good. What about you, Jeremy? I'm waiting for you, bro. I was going to say, have you guys watched Succession? I want to see it so bad. Yeah, I mean, um, all those all those shows that you guys just mentioned, they're up for nominations for the Emmys this year. So, um, I just wanted to go over the list with you guys a little bit. So, a couple people that are nominated. Uh, we got Best Actor in a Drama Series, Jeff Bridger's The Old Man. Uh, that was a show on FX. It was, it was pretty good. Brian Cox and Kieran Culkin. Fun fact, Kieran Culkin is the brother of Malachi Culkin uh, of In Succession. Um, Bob Odenrich in Better Call Saul. Uh, Pedro Pascal in The Last of Us. And another one, Jeremy Strong in Succession. I love Jeremy Strong, by the way, boys. He's a really, really good actor. Uh, we got. Best talking about you, Jeremy. We got a bet. We got <laughs> best actress in a drama series. We got Sharon Horgan, Bad Sisters, Melanie Linsky in Yellow Jackets, which is a really crazy show, which is a little bit more of like a thriller slash horror. If you guys are really into that, I suggest watching that. Yellow it was. Jackets. It was on Showtime. Elizabeth Moss in The Handmaid's Tale. If you watch The Handmaid's Tale, you just might as well stick to watching Lifetime. Bella Ramsey in The Last of Us. Carrie Russell and the Diplomat, and another person in succession, Sarah Snook. Um, now, we definitely have a bunch of stuff. We Like Marco said, Endor was in Best Drama Series. One of my favorite shows this year was House of Dragons. That was uh, nominated for an Emmy. Um, yeah, there's, there's some pretty good nominations this year. I feel like the Emmys is always the bright spot of Hollywood. It, it's always, you know, TVs are now always treated with the same amount as respect as movies sometimes. And when I, now I feel like we're due to streaming services, we're seeing TV shows get the same type of budgets if you include how much each episode costs in total. So almost the same amount of, of a budget as movies. And yeah, man, I mean, look, we've seen it with, um, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot his name. Uh, Anthony Starr in, uh, in The Boys. We've seen how much it's helped him. Uh, we've seen Jensen Eccles get a, a second a second surge of popularity due to him playing Soldier Boy. Um, oh. Yeah, we've seen a couple people like uh, Jeremy Allen White from The Bear, um, a show that IGN just gave a perfect 10 for season two. He's had a, a huge spike in popularity. So TV shows, this portion of awards and the and you know, awards and the press and all that stuff. I feel like this is always a bright spot. So yeah, boys, I want to know what do you guys think could get the award for best show overall if that was actually even oh, um for the year yeah well would I'm you guys go, think that, i'm gonna go with last of us that show was sold it was well done it was perfect like i loved it so i'm, I'm okay, excited so for season two I'm, I'm a little the only thing is i'm a little like skeptical on how they're gonna do it because if it's like when she's like what like 13 14 in the season one yeah. imagine it's gonna be like it might be either a time skip because she is 19 so she is like ellie's 
age in like this part two. But the thing is, when you see how like drastic it looks, like yeah, like the the age gap, I don't I don't know if she'll be able to pull off like that. Like oh, you know. I mean, I don't know how old Bella Ramsey is in real life. She's like nineteen or twenty. She's around yeah, 20. so she's like so twenty. That's the thing. I mean, they casted her as a fourteen-year-old kid. And she's like, T, so she looks fourteen, though. That's the thing. No, I like, mean, yeah, that, I agree with you. That's what I'm saying. So, like, if people see her as a nineteen-year-old, they're gonna be like, "Oh, there's not much difference." You know what I mean? So uh, it's gonna yeah. be weird because they casted her as a kid, and now she's gonna be nineteen years old in a relationship and stuff. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely glad though that that The Last of Us is just the the start of the beginning, literally, mm-hmm. in the sense that. You know, we saw how Hollywood attacked the superhero genre. Video games have some of the best stories ever told, and we're definitely going to start to see how Hollywood uh, tries to copy the Last of Us formula with how accurate they are and how well they honor the IPs. But Marco, what about you? What do you think is the favorite? What would you want if there was an award for best show of the year? What would it be for you? Well, Last of Us was a great. Well, Last of Us was like a great pick, but I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Better Call Saul. Oh my God, man, man! When when he was oh, like a big, true stigma, yo, yeah. his like, his his scenes in Breaking Bad were so hilarious. I just sometimes. think I, I think I think the show deserves it because I think last year I don't think it even won anything. Um, unfortunately, uh, a whole bunch of shows got recognized, but that one, and I think this year, and, and considering just how well the show has been in terms of its consistency it's 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 on the level of of i mean you can argue it's on the level of breaking bad um it, that yeah, whole universe sure. is is incredible that, that whole that whole entire it's franchise flawless. yeah so i i think i think that show i think the show is deserving of winning best drama series um I, over the last of us over succession over andor over all these shows over um over Yellow Jacket, I, I do think it deserves it. I think it's just been consistently well written. The emotion is there. The cinematography is beautiful. This latest season was incredible. Um, that it, it's the one that really made me. The, it, it's the one that stood out the most to me. Um, and for it to be the isn't this the final season, right? This is the final. Yeah. I mean, this is is a, it, for it to be the final season, I think um, it deserves its credit, and I think it should win best drama series. Um, it's incredible. I love I, I love this show so much, actually. That was actually a dope pick. So, Jeremy, what about you? If there was a... Is it is it a drama? No, just yeah. in general. If there was an award for best show given for the year, what would you pick? I'm not going to lie. I have a few that I need to... Ca- I'm going to definitely watch um the, the Yellow Jacket one. I'm going to go... You know what? I'm going to go with Wednesday. I love it. I love it. That, dude, I actually had a fire time watching that show. I love Jennifer Ortega just as much Jennifer as... Jennifer Ortega. Jennifer Ortega. That's I know Jennifer. You're, not, you're not a real fan, bro. Yo, what stop. do you mean I'm not a real fan? Jennifer Ortega. Her name is Jenna no. Ortega, bro. Yeah, it's Jenna. Whatever. You're not Jennifer, bad. Jenna, you're not whatever. You're not bad. Oh, whatever. I watch He's bad show. with names. He's bad with names. But, He's bad with names. No, but I'm terrible hey, with names. But you know what? You proved a good point, Jeremy. It was an easy. It was an easy binge watch because around that time of the year, I remember like shows were very slow. There was nothing really out, and yeah. Wednesday was such a dope watch. It was a dope watch. Wednesday was a good show. I liked it. Oh, uh, I, I mean, and the amount of popularity it got from it, I, I, like after during people while they were watching it, like it was so popular. Yeah. Like there was like TikToks about it. It was uh, like people. People were buying like her dresses. Like my cousin, my bro, my cousin bought her dress. Weirdo, bro. But she, yeah, the, she got the whole, <laughs> the, the whole like like five five feet thick yeah. thick ass sole, bro. The one that fucking no, that nun wore. And the they're ready for out of you. A lot, a bunch of people for Halloween are gonna dress up as Wednesday. Party City's gonna go crazy with that. But um, oh no, yeah, sure. it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, no, I thought it was I just mean, a perfect show. No, it was. It was great. I mean, they built a lot of lore in that show. You know, they kind of expanded on the Adams universe. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, one of my favorite shows is a show that you guys probably haven't watched. It's called Shrinking. It's with Jason Segel and um, Will uh, Will Ferrell. I can't remember that Will Ferrell and um, Harrison Ford. 
Uh, Jason Siegel plays a therapist whose wife died a couple years ago, so he is a widower, and he's stuck raising their daughter, but he's struggling with, you know, going down the right path in life, and it's just about him trying to redeem himself. It was a really good show for me. Uh, another show up there was The Bear. I feel like The Bear really, really, um, hap- you know, it captured the idea of what it's like to be our age and deal with family at the same time, deal with our own personal struggles and the way we process things. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm probably going to watch the Emmys this year. I'm excited for it. Um, we'll, look, we'll probably talk about this next episode and see what got nominated. And we'll either come with pitchforks or with smiles the next podcast. So we'll see. But um, yeah, to, to, to close off the podcast, boys, topic of the day is greatest Cartoon Network show of all time. Damn, bro. I'm looking at the list right now, and this is, like, tough. I have my I choice, already have though. mine. I, I already have mine. mine. I feel like me and you are going to have the same one. I think we all... Depending how it, mine it is goes, probably gonna be mine is, mine is probably going to be a little bit of a sleeper, but... It's, it's hard. Like, I mean, I, I loved it. Pick of the list. We got everything. I'm, I'm, not, looking at, I'm not looking at no list. I'm just... Uh, as soon as you gave me the question, it already popped up in, into my head. No, this is a real four yeah. nightmare for us, boys. For me, this is... It's unquestionable... For me, for me, uh, it's 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 undisputed which is the best Cartoon Network uh, cartoon. Well, all right, so if it's undisputed, why don't you lead off the bat? Or lead off from the bat. For me, by far, it's Ed Ed Eddie. It is the greatest cartoon show in Cartoon Network history. Probably one of the best animated shows I've seen. I Good loved point. everything about this show. There's not one episode that has been mediocre. Um, this is a this is a a, a brand uh, a show that I don't even want touched. I remember like a few years back, I, I think it was like a yeah. joke or a meme, but there was this like picture that I saw on Instagram. It was um, Ed, Ed and Eddie like in like, ghost like form. No, no, no it, it it was like apparently this announcement that it was coming back as like a like a like yeah, a new like series. Agreement. And I got yeah. so pissed. I'm like, no, the, the the movie was so perfect. It, it concluded everybody's arcs. Yeah, Ed and Eddie, yeah. they they were finally accepted into the into the in, into the cul-de-sac. Yeah, the big picture was dope. The big it, picture. It, was it, cool. That's how you end the show. I, I don't I don't want it to be touched. That's it. Leave it alone. It's one of the very few IPs where it just ends off perfectly and it hasn't been touched even to this day. Keep it as and it, it is. Started, yeah. The characters are great. The They're all original. I love Johnny, uh, Jimmy. I love Jimmy, even though it, he he's my most hated character. I hate that piece of shit, but I, I love him. I love I love to hate that. I love to hate that character. Uh, no, I yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy was a bitch. Kevin, I, I love Jimmy. Kevin, oh, bro. I love oh. everybody, bro. Like it's insane. Yeah, Every Kevin, episode. Kevin is oh. The episodes were so creative. There was some stuff that I didn't even think they were like. There's some jokes that like. There were some adult jokes in there as well that like as a kid you wouldn't even recognize, but as as an adult the you're watching. Sisters. The like, Kanger sisters. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Holy moly. It's just some like in the oh, jawbreakers. My favorite episode yeah. by far is probably the one where like the jawbreaker thing was open and they got the money for it and they ran to go yeah. get it, but. Everybody decided to stop them. Oh, yeah. There's an obstacle, and then at the very end, when like all those like um all of, I forgot the animal. I forgot like Eddie was had to choose between the jawbreakers or his friends, <laughs> and it was oh, yeah. it was a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> and he decided, "Fuck y'all, I'm going straight to the candy." <laughs> and Man, as was... soon as he went there, the door closed, and then you see a jawbreaker at the end, and it's 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 obviously a different color, and it's Johnny's head. And he's yeah. still eating his fucking fat ass in the fucking thing. God, I love that show. I love that show. It's 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 uh, it's what I consider a perfect cartoon. It's not I like mean, SpongeBob, where like the first four seasons were great and then it turns off to be shit. No, every single episode was great. Uh, cartoon Network, if you're watching this, which I hope you are, um, don't touch that show. Keep it off. Leave it off. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. You can touch any other show. Just don't touch that one. Please, for the love of God, don't touch that one. I love it, yeah. That's absolutely an amazing thing. That's what about you, Jeremy? Jeremy, yeah. what about you? I'm going to go with one that I grew up... I, well, not, I pretty much grew Say up watching Because, you know, Ed and Eddie was, was going to be my choice, but I'm going to go with yeah, Camp Laszlo, bro. Camp Laszlo. <laughs> I'm going to go with Camp Laszlo, bro. 
I love Cam. I've seen Cam Lalo. I've seen that show. Yo, why did Eric get up and I've walk away, too. bro? Yo, smelly ass, bro. Yo, I love Cam Lazlo, bro. That shit was awesome. They had fucking. They yo, had the, yo, they had the, yo, that shit lasted like. Yo, that, shit lasted, back in. that shit lasted one season, bro. That Literally. shit was not even a. Bro. That shit, yo, don't be talking about. <laughs> no, wait, hold on. I want to hear his reason. I want to hear his reason. Bro. bro, it was a sleeper. Bro, okay, listen, bro. Even though it was a short, it was a short show. Like even growing up as a kid, like I, I always like was interested by it because you guys remember the end, right? When, when they went to when they went to go get Grandmaster Lumpus and like he was like a fraud the whole time, like it was like low key like, like a fucking thriller, but for kids, like you know what it is. Like, nah, you, that shit was not like, a you had to deal, like, you had to deal with you had to deal with all those shenanigans that they dealt with, and then towards the end you had to find out that that Lumpus was like a fraud. And like you, God knows what yeah. he did. Like he was like a lunatic. He was crazy. You're I right. You're right. Cool. Camp Lazlo. That's funny. I love I mean, Raja. Everybody, wild, bro. bro. Shout out a little, a little known fact. Everybody call me Raja in middle school, bro. I can so, see it. Can Yo, see who's it. the pig? When I was fat as fuck, everybody used to call me that shit, bro. <laughs> <You> <laughs> know, that's there, Raja. Everybody used to call me that, bro. That's Raja. Raja. Yeah, Raja. Yeah, Raja yeah. Whatever the fuck his name was. <laughs> He used to go, he used to go, Lazlo, I don't know what I to do. I love that show. You know why they used I to call you show. Raja, bro? Why? Because they thought you were a Raja, bro. They probably yeah. did thought I was a Raja, bro, but... Bro, wow. Like, you know I mean, what? I'm going to watch that show I, again. I don't know. Like, I, watched it, I watched it a good, like, seven, eight times. Like, I really did. You're a liar. Seven. You're a liar. You're such a liar, bro. bro you're you're liar. Me, yeah, we stop, bro. It's 120 episodes. You did not watch it eight times, bro. You don't even, yeah, bro, it's not even, what do you mean, bro? Everyone's Dragon Ball Z once. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I haven't watched Dragon Ball Z. Ball Z. Hey, yeah, bro, hey bro, listen, bro, listen, bro, listen. Bro, bro, listen. Well, I mean, he could be a massive fan. He could be a massive fan. Look at him. Yeah, look, he doesn't know. But, I mean, look, I'll just decide. I don't think Cap Lazo is a bad show. I just thought it was such a bad pick when you had shows like Fosters available. You had Teen, Teen Titans available. You had Justice League. I mean, it, had, it's what he feels. That's what he likes. You had Ben 10 available. Yeah. This is, Ooh, this, is you know, this is the thing where when you ask your friends, yo, ben what do you ben. like? What do you what do you like? And they try to be so different. They say, oh, man, I really like that RB sound. I did like Cap Lazlo, bro. I actually really um, liked that show, bro. Like, it was a it was a good show, but, like, I don't, I don't, yeah, I agree. I, I understand what Eric means, too. <laughs> yo, yo, Jeremy goes to Toggle Bowl and he gets the protein bowl, bro. Trying to be different. All shit. right, <laughs> all right, Jeremy. I liked your pick. I'm gonna go see Camp Lazo. Just I, I'm gonna see one episode just to see how it is. What again. about yeah, go oh, What about what about you, Cam? What you thinking, bro? Yeah, bro. This is a hard one, but I'm gonna have to go with a very respectable choice here. Obviously, you know, talking about Justice League. That's an amazing pick. Oh, I fucking I. I didn't even think yeah. of Justice League. We haven't even brought up Billy and Mandy. We haven't even brought up Billy and Mandy, by the way. I know. We it's in my so top five. Like it's in my top I five, but NNN was just, yeah. for me, it was just for me, disputed. For me, Billy and Mandy was definitely on um, top five for sure. But the thing is, I'm talking about Justice League here. So this is where everybody pretty much got pretty much into introduced. You know, we always had, like, you know, like, we have Batman. We have uh, Eric's favorite superhero, you know what I'm talking about. You know, fucking uh, Superman himself. Um, you know, we have like a lot of people that we, you know we get to see. We have the Green Arrow. We have fucking um, the Flash, Wonder Woman, uh, the Green Lantern. You know, John Stewart. We had Martian Manhunter. With all these people, and like the show was just great. Like it was like a lot of like things. There was um, there's an episode in particular that always like, so like, it's like always embedded in my head. Is um. The one where Batman goes talks to uh, the little girl. I think her name's Ace or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah, she yeah. was in the the, the Ace Spade. No. Mm -hmm. Or the the Royal Flush game. She was in the Royal Flush game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was uh that episode. I was, I re I got like a little like clip of it on TikTok, and like I remember seeing. It. I was like, bro, I remember seeing this kid. I didn't. Re I didn't like. It was kind of sad, you know. It's just yeah. like knowing the fact that like. Yo, Batman in that show carried. He was vulnerable in that episode. That was the episode yeah. where they they came out with the twist that uh the plot twist that Terry McGinnis was actually an experiment made by the mm -hmm. government. 
Yep. I remember. And uh, yeah, bro, like it was one of those like things where like imagine you got you got Batman. Batman's always like this hard ass. It doesn't like you know he's like you know I have my fucking family die in front of me. Like I, don't, I have no emotional emotions. But it was like one of those like few scenes. As a kid, you don't realize it. But then when you grow up and you see, it's like yo, this guy's like having yeah. a bonding moment because like you know she's, the girl's gonna die. Bro, Whatever, you... if you haven't seen it in, like you know the twenty years that it's been out, but and she does uh, die. She yeah. does die. And she, you know, she realized she comes to terms. She's like, oh, like I'm gonna be dead, like soon. Like everybody's gonna forget about me. And then you know, he, Batman was just there. And like out of cool. all people, like you know, you you didn't get fucking uh you know super boots, and his uh you know he wasn't there. Wonder Woman wasn't there. Wally West wasn't. You know, nobody was there. The only one that was there was the goat, Batman. And yeah. just like in every other, you know, series Batman has been, Batman and this show carried. Imagine he, like, everybody was like, oh, we're going to turn our Simpson into, like, the intergalactic, uh, you know, police, like, force. And Batman's like, we? Who the fuck is we? I'm a part-timer. And he clicked on Wonder Woman. Yeah. Bro, that's, that, that's true, like, that's a true Chad right there. Yeah, so, that. Talk about Superman. Yeah. <laughs> What? What? Now you're, now you're defending Superman. What about Superman? That man has he no. He said fuck Superman. Oh, he said fuck. Su- All right, but okay. I mean, no. I mean, that's what put Cartoon Network uh, a tier above anybody else. It, yeah, I bro. Yo, Nickelodeon had Danny Phantom and had Drake and Josh and stuff, and that's yeah. I had like. I, I think I know what Eric's gonna pick, but I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna let him. No, I mean, I mean, for me, the thing is, Cartoon Network was timeless. You could go back and watch these it shows. Was. It's so, it's the perfect it's the perfect amount it's like a perfect dopamine hit because it reminds yeah. you of your childhood, yep. and then it's still so, it relate to this day. Imagine uh, Betty Cohen, if you're seeing this, you are the goat. You are the true goat. Yeah, you. Uh, you. Yeah, we all love you. You're like the grandma for everybody. Yeah, I mean, it was the one, and the one that really killed killed it for us was Jeff Staples. He's the one that. Uh, that had us love everything that we we enjoyed. Was it Staples? I forgot. It was something. But um, yeah, yeah, that was my pick for. It was Jim Staples. Jim Staples. Yeah. Jim Samples actually. Jim, Jim Samples. Samples. Yeah, yeah. I mixed it up with the guy from uh, Pigeon, the guy the skateboarding company, but uh, the streetwear company. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, those are all solid picks, boys. Outside of Camp Lazaro, um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many, bro. I think, I mean, realistically, the two shows that had the most impact on my life, I have to be tied for number one. Uh, <laughs> my, my, be... my other, my, my bad, Eric. If, yeah, no, another good. show for sure that was also tied with me was uh, Teen Titans. Those two, yeah. Justice League and Teen Titans, that was yeah. pretty much like, or like, it was like one of my first introductions to like superheroes besides exactly. like Spider-Man and like... Exactly. You know. And, um... That was the thing. Ed and Eddie felt like a safe haven for me. I felt like I was growing up with them. I felt like I was hanging out with them. Um, you know, that artwork was so dope because it was unmatched. That's like that artwork cannot be replicated. And that's what I love the most about it. Um, T Titans is tied for me for number one because um, nobody changed. I just felt like Teen Titans had such an impact on my life as a kid, um, especially, you know, when we talk about Beast Boy and everything that he went through with Terra. That was a really, really dope, really dope, uh, you know, time period in his life. Um, there was serious notes like when Cyborg tried to become human again, and he just understood that he he has to accept who he is. Teen Titans is one of those where you can't get bored watching it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would have, you know, is that your pick? Like eight. It's not a great storyline. I mean, yeah. And then the worst part is, is I'm not even bringing up Samurai Jack either. Like these I, are like okay. These. Are, these are these are these are literally shows from our uh, the best time period in Cartoon Network. I mean, that time period in Cartoon Network is called the CN City era. It was. Do you guys remember those Cartoon Network bumpers where it was yeah. like yeah. all the cartoons walking around in a city? That's uh, that was our time period, and that's thanks to Jim Samples. And um, for a second, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm sorry to cut you off, but for a second, when you were mentioning Teen Titans, I'm like, oh, is this his pick? And I was gonna bring up Samurai Jack because I know how much you love that show. I'm like that show was. Because for a second, I'm like, yo, I'm surprised this, this guy didn't pick Samurai Jack. But I, yeah, I mean, that's your number one pick. Um, yeah. No, 
I mean, the only um, thing the intro, like, for, the intro for Samurai Jack was so goaded, too, bro. Oh, yeah. my God. All I those mean, all those shows had really good, uh, like, intros. Yeah. Yeah, and two times, too, where, like, if they did the... When they would do the Japanese voice, it meant that it was yeah, bro. Like, an episode. Um, it was a... Can you guys give me two seconds? I mean, we're about to finish. All right. Yeah, I don't know, because my stomach, like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, boys, so, you know, all I could say is Cartoon Network had a special place in our hearts, and once again, I wish, uh, the only thing I wish Cartoon Network does is bring back one season of Teen Titans, because we never finished it. Um, I love you guys. Um, thank you for visiting the cul-de-sac. Please come back again, and with that being said, the Puerto Reaper is out. I love everybody. Thank you for the support. I feel like Eric, like how you did last week when he shot himself, bro. Like, bro, <laughs> I am like yes. shitting myself, bro. Like, you know when like you have to take a shit and it hurts, bro. Like your stomach and you feel it right here in your stomach, bro. And I'm just here, like. That was me yesterday when I went to Target. I was like, bro, fuck, bro. I'm like, yo, I try to move around, make make myself comfortable, bro. Like, fuck. Right. Yo, if you're a viewer, please, I'm 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 hopeful that you guys aren't eating right now. Yeah, but Jeremy, Jeremy, signed, Jeremy signed out so you could uh, head out, bro. Oh, no, nah, he said you went straight to the back. He's gone, bro. <laughs> Is Jeremy signing out? All right. Uh... All right, man. Um, yeah, guys. You know, thank you for this uh, for this discussion. We'll see you guys next week. You know, Cartoon Network. This is where you're the goat. Jim Samples, you're the ultra goat. You're the super chat of like our generation. Thank you so um, much. I'm glad for everything you have brought to us um just like i'm saying uh yeah Bama was out you know go subscribe to uh marble on youtube he just released a new uh video well, yeah about uh yeah yeah um as always you guys can follow me at dcs marble at twitter and tiktok you guys can also add my, or subscribe to my youtube channel which is simply called marble marble I am working on a new video as of right now. I'm in the editing stages of, of it. I've been honestly, I've been working on it, really before the recording. As soon as I finished recording, I took a ten minute break and then went straight to record this episode. And I'm gonna Me continue. Too. Yes, Eric. Yeah, as well. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to Eric's like new video, bro. And it's gonna be a, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be, gonna be really I'm, good. I've been Thank you, boy. Yo, I think I think uh, Jeremy just uh, dropped the uh, yeah. Oppenheimer. Yeah, he dropped an Oppenheimer. <laughs> he but it in the group chat. Thank you guys so much. Uh, as, yeah, so you guys can follow me there. Um, this has been a great episode. We want to see. We hopefully we see you guys in the next one and the uh, upcoming ones as well. But yeah, I know this has been a great week, and thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.